Hey guys, Jeremy and Mark here again. We're excited to actually talk about the second uh, Freddy, uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy's Revenge, or as some people call it, the gay one. And I found out why it's called that for sure. <laughs> but before we start, Mark, show off that he got this. What did you get this? I, I got Horror Block. If you guys don't do Horror Block, but you like horror movies, you should get Horror Block. This is a really awesome looking poster here. Uh, it's a fan made one. Mark says apparently for the a little bit of time I can have it until he has a spot on it, his it wall. It can go up on his wall because I don't have a writing room right now, so it's oh. his for a bit. It's not as good as the first one. That's <laughs> something for sure. But it made more money. It made more money, but it, it also had an interesting idea. It's from, and I've seen it in other movies, I just cannot place my finger on one that I know of, but the idea that there is a innocent person that is being corrupted within his own psyche by an evil entity. The evil entity then takes over the said innocent person and then there's a moment of conflict with the innocent person and say a true love or a friend that breaks the hold. And that is what is essentially going on with Nightmare on Elm Street 2 except the whole hold is him being gay. Some context to the fact <laughs> that we continually... Um, it's, it came out way later. Um, the writer finally admitted that he deliberately wrote in homoerotic subtext and had the concept of the main character, Jesse, dealing with his closeted homosexuality um, and it manifesting itself in, in this way with Freddy literally coming into him. There's a monster inside me! coming into him and and taking over him and, and killing people. Which, um, spoiler alert for the end, uh, he gets saved by the love of a woman. And I know that the writer wanted to express things that he said he felt, there was a whole bunch of other stuff that went into this, but I'm not sure that's necessarily the right message in the end. Um, it kind of feels like this whole struggle, finding oneself, and then the answer is the love, like straight love. And we saw a guy get towel slapped on the <laughs> ass to death earlier uh, strapped, on in the movie. Also strapped up, BDSM, like full, full naked, and this like Christian Grey would have been jealous. Uh, not a single female dies in this movie. Oh well, technically the lady at the end, but then again, the ending is almost as which lady. What the, the, the girl, remember? She's like, everything's all right, and boom, well, like Falco yeah, punches but her. but again, that's the end of the movie. That's the, like what it's I said about the mom. As it's just as weird, yeah, it's just as odd of an ending as the first <laughs> one was. Well, not as much. Not, not as, it's not as weird. And the movie's got a really low death total, which is weird for a sequel. I mean, it's not like... It's only like one number higher. Yeah, Nightmare didn't have a lot of kills either, the first but one. But the kills but... are really graphic. Like, that's the thing about these kills. There's, they're not, they're not really that detailed. <laughs> it's really what happens before them. The two things that are definitely better than this film is the acting for one is a lot better. No one's talking, oh no. No, Freddy's there's no ro there's no robots. No. Even the main guy, he, despite the fact that the some scream, of his... Scream King. <clears throat> I just killed him! There's a few moments that are a little odd. He, he's but... got a great scream though. I'll yeah, give no. him that. Like, you don't <laughs> often hear a guy scream in a movie like that, but he nails it. A bunch of times too. And the second thing was the gore. The gore, the dream gore. Like when, yeah. what's when when Freddy comes out of fucking Jesse? That was Such a cool scene. that was reminding me of the thing yeah, be a so clip. much. Be a clip right here. The hand tearing, the, the skin hand tearing, splitting, yeah. and then and just like, like I thought it was, I, I thought it's cool. Even right from the start, where the blades first start coming out of his yeah. fingers. Yeah. Oh, I was freaking out. I was like, oh god, oh. Fucks, it's gross. The thing that this film tried to do was be a, one of those films that's a lot more, I guess, one of those psychological thrill thrillers. And it, technically, the the second half of the film really caps, uh, like captures it. And it, I like the second half. The first half is boring as fuck. Yeah, it's it's not very entertaining. There's just nothing that goes on. Um, the bus scene at the beginning is cool. Robert Englund not in Freddy makeup cameo. Um, it's kind of fun, they do some cool stuff, it's some good set pieces, but overall the beginning is... 
I think they should have just gone more. I like the the whole house being overheated thing. The parakeet thing is so dumb. Oh yeah, the parakeet fight. Like, there's a family that says we went toe to toe with a parakeet and won because like, it blew up. The psychological side of things. I think there's a whole another movie within this movie oh. that'd be really cool to see, which doesn't have Freddy in it at all, and it's just like Freddy as a backdrop to it. But the idea that he like found this mask and did all this and maybe removed. The, the subtext, but just having this guy go crazy in this house that's overheating because of whatever reason. Definitely the whole idea of what happened in the latter half was a entertaining part. It was something that I I understood what the first the first part was trying to do. It was building up to it, kind of like a necessary build up, but holy shit, how long did we wait for the first fucking person to be killed? Yeah. Like, it's a long, and it's a long wait for a sequel where we already kind of know what it's all about, but it's because that's what they did with the sequel. They changed everything from the ground up. Now Freddy's killing people in the real world. He's running around. And by the way, my biggest problem with this whole movie is the party scene because he's trapped all these people in this party. There's fire everywhere and he's killed a few of them, but instead of killing anybody else, he's literally throwing lawn chairs. Yeah, it's like, fuck this chair! He's throwing <laughs> on chairs when he's, he's just be standing beside the bookshelf, and yeah. the girl looks at him and he's like, fuck this knocks plate! Him, fuck the plate. <laughs> he's not killing anybody, he's just literally that's, throwing furniture So around. yeah, that's the thing that were Silly. Those were the things that were real detractors for me. I did like the psychological element. The story the is act, cool. Yeah. Like, and the, and it's, the, a, it's a good progression as a sequel. It does some interesting new things. I actually cared about the character's more so in this movie than I did in the last one. Yeah. But, as I was saying, very boring start, and we went from the first kill in the first movie, that was really fucking good, set the bar, absolutely terrifying, being murdered upside down on your ceiling, <laughs> to a naked dude being towel wet to death. To be, again, though, it is a good it is a good kill. I don't know. Um, I, was, I think it was a step down and weird. Little direct. step, little step, step down. down into weird bill. Gets a bunch of balls thrown at his face. Yeah, and he's tied <laughs> he's got, up and dragged. And through the whole hallway. time he's like, I'm chewing my gum. Hmm, this seems a little bit. I, I kind of wish they had a bit where he's chewing gum while still like tied up to the wall. Like, what's going on? <laughs> so like, this seems, oh, oh, I swallowed my gum. <laughs> this seems. Oh, that was almost a slip there. <laughs> swallowed my what? Sorry. <laughs> um... <laughs> It's definitely a step down in, in the kill, but I think it's because they probably blew the makeup farm on All the, the, like, Freddy coming out of Jesse. Pretty much most of the effects were like, they probably really thought of the stronger latter half of the film, yeah. the effects, the kills, and then the whole story aspect. But just how it starts and how long it takes to get there is a real downturner for me. But as I said, the effects are really good. The characters are actually more relatable. Not, well, not relatable. Um, uh, some of them are, though. I mean, like, I like there's good moments. Like, when um, they're first doing their push up thing, and he thinks Grady's getting into his grill, and he's like, What's the problem with me? He's like, Man, I'm just chatting, bro. That was and good. And it's funny because I realized how much bros are still bros. Because, Je what's his name? Why can we never remember the boyfriend's names? Um, <laughs> by the way, in the last one, it's uh, Rod. So we were mixing Rick and Todd. Oh, it's like, Rod. It's Rod. Um, he's still a bro. He could, you could transport him. Maybe not the short shorts, but transport him into any new like dude oh my bro God, movie. The short shorts, in and this he movie. is totally just a dude bro. Like, yeah, no. It's, it shows you how like short shorts and crop tops are gone for guys, but dude bros are still the same. It's kind of a toss up for me. Like I said, the beginning of it's a really slow drag, and the latter half of it's alright. But I don't. I'm almost wanting to put this on the, the spectrum of good or bad, like my review scale. Like first, I want to hear what you would say of it, of yours. Um, and I, then I'll honestly, tell you this is I will. This is my least favorite movie in the series. Like, there's so many things that I wanted to be good about it, that I wanted more out of. But then you get like, I when Freddy came out of the party scene, there wasn't a lot of deaths. I know movies like to amp up deaths. I'm sure I saw this as a kid. And didn't think about it, but when I started watching movies, like I think the uh, the one of the time I was in late high school, and I decided I was going to watch the whole series, um, and I found I was like I'd forgotten about the movie. I didn't really remember too much about them, and I the party scene happened. I just couldn't wait. I was like, oh yeah, Freddy's like running around, everybody's burning, and like I remembered it so much better than it was because that party scene is so boring. He does he kills like two guys, and they're just like. Ugh. 
dead. Like, it's not, like, we're not slashing people open, we're not doing all this fun stuff, and he's throwing lawn to, like, it's such a detractor. And then even, like, the end of the movie where I want, I thought they could have played, I like, a little more before we got to the boiler room. Like, I liked the way it got there, but it just, it seemed like the first hour and 11 minutes of this movie, it's a slow drag. It's not even a slow burn, it's a slow drag. Mm -hmm. And the movie ends in, like, eight minutes at the end. It's just so quick. Um, honestly, like, I'd probably give it a three... Wow, oh, actually, actually, maybe a four, maybe a four, because the it, the story was so good. I want to say I want to give it a higher rating, but there's just so many other problems I have with it. Which that is movie. actually, solidly enough, that's exactly what I was going to give it. I was going to give it a three because it's a movie that has a lot of cool aspects that, when you think about them, they are cool at first, but then you realize that the film doesn't fully capitalize on them. There's obviously yeah. a slow burn. The kills are completely uncreative, which is really Except weird. Except the first one. It's it, just in a weird creative it's just, way. It's, yeah. It is creative. It's creative. Yeah. It's I mean, weird. Yeah, you give it a few points. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, that's our review for the second Nightmare on Elm Street film. I just had three up to show three out of seven. As you said, second, that makes me look stupid. <laughs> so, you wanted, you were going to say three? Yeah, well? three's, three's, three it is what it is. I yeah. want to say four. Like, if we'll go three and a half for me. That's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> Anyways, so we'll eventually do the third one. I'm disappearing for a little while, but hopefully when I come back, we'll be able to review the third one. I am very much looking forward to it because we just did a radio show earlier today playing music throughout the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. One of them including the song from the third one by Dokken. Dokken which Dream is, Warriors. Which is such an awesome... 80s hair band song. Wow, it is so actually good. really good. It's a really good music video too. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Yeah. So I'll put the link to our radio show in the description below if you guys want to listen to it. Anyways, guys, oh, hopefully hey, link to my freaking pages as well, like Creepy Corridor, oh, Creepy right. Corridor Pictures. Uh, I don't know when this is going up, but Saturday, June 17th, which is tomorrow for us. Uh, I'm releasing. Yeah. Oh, oh it's after midnight. It's almost. Oh, it's not after midnight yet? No, it's not yet. Oh, damn. So two days from now, <laughs> um, I'm releasing another short film that my company made. And I'll, pro and I'll talk about He's that, too. He's probably going to review it at some yeah. point. Yeah, and if there's audio issues, I'll probably point that out. Yeah, you will, you jerk. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.